Hello, my name is Jerry Chris. I live in Lapine, Oregon, uh, in the central part of the state, about 30 miles, miles south of Bend. Um, we're going to tie here a fly that um, I've been tying for over 15 years. Um, it has a technique in it called hair hackling, um, and it's just a couple of materials, just our, uh, Australian possum, some copper wire, and the latest version we're going to do with a little bit of flashback. So, and we're going to use a rusty dun thread, um, it's just an 8-aught, um, nothing special. Um, we're just going to take the thread back, just snap it off there. I'm going to take a little piece of copper wire. You can see this is kind of a crazy looking spool, not your normal spool out of a fly shop. This came out of an electric pencil, you know, a little electric engraving tool that they used to sell around. And uh, it's, you can tell it's all un un goofy wiring, so we're just going to snap a piece out of it. Um, the reason I like it is because of the color. It really ties like the old uh, Sawyer pheasant tail nymph. It really can tie that. It's got a very pretty color to it. Uh, we're going to put a, a little copper rib in this. And one of the tricks I do is I'm going to take this and I'm going to put a little dent in the wire. So I have a little bent. I'm going to take that bend, I'm going to lay it right against the thread. And you see my fingers aren't even near, near the hook. I can start wrapping and that thing will not come out. It'll lay there. I'm going to put my fingernail against the, the wire on this, this side of the hook. And it won't roll out on me. It can't move. It can't come around. I'm going to take the thread just about back to there. Okay, Get that loop up out of the way. This is some of the under fur out of this Australian possum hide. It's got a, like a perpetual fly. Once you get this thing going, um, it'll just about feed itself as far as materials. Just get in there. Okay, so I'm going to take a little dubbing. Going to smooth it out here. Just get a little dub, little, it's going to be kind of a rough dub. This is a fishing fly. This is a searching nymph, if you will. Um, I'm going to add a little more. Now I'm going to add it before I run out uh, so that I can tie it into the last batch. Um, I just try to do this to try to feed, just keep feeding it in until I get up to the front here. You want to leave yourself some room up here. So that's, that's pretty good room. We've got you know, a sixteenth of an inch up there. Now I'm going to counter wrap this copper wire. Now when we counter wrap, we go opposite. Now, there are people that argue that, that it doesn't make any difference, but I find it does. If you think as my knuckles of my fingers as our material that we just wrapped in there, the body material, if I take a wrap of rib and I take something through here and it falls in those grooves, it's going to disappear. So I'm going to bring my wraps across this way, and I like it because it stand, I believe it stands up more. I'm going to put one wrap right in back on the hook itself. We'll call that like a tag. And I'm going to bring it up. Nice tight wraps. Again, fairly even. I'm going to open them up just a little bit as I come to the front. Now when I get up here, I'm going to take one, two, three wraps of thread. I'm going to reach my finger and I'm going to push on it and I'm just going to snap it rather than cut it. Now, a thing that can happen, I'm going to take, clean this up just a little bit. I got a couple of wild hairs. I don't really care about all two of them, but they were a little long. Um, if I was to take some hard wraps right now, because my copper went this way, I'll wrap that material right off. But if I take a couple of soft wraps, one, two, three, over that copper, and then I pull, it won't unwrap on you. You won't wind it back off. Okay, so that's how you keep from doing that. Okay, now we're gonna, we have the body built. We've got the copper tied in, the rib. Now we're going to tie in a little mylar for our flashback. And so I'm going to take that right back to where we stopped our body and the wire. Just tie it in, leave it nice and flat up there, and we're going to clip out the excess here. And try to keep the head clean if there's anything up there. Try to keep that head area clean. Okay, so we got the mylar in there. Now we're going to take, make a dubbing loop. I'm going to roll the thread over. Now, this has to have a closed loop. Taking this loop over the hook does not close it uh, well enough for me. So I'm going to take, I'm going to take and throw my thread over the loop one time and come up. And you can see right here that it's closed as a v, closed V all the way to the bottom. That's what we're after. 
I got a little piece sticking up here. We'll trim that out of there. Now we're going to wax the thread a little. Just a little bit of wax, just enough to hold the hair that we're going to take off here, um, just to, to hold it. So we're going to take again, we're going to take this material, take it down to the hide. I'm going to roll it in my fingertips one time, come under and cut off here right at the base. And you'll see here that I've cut it off at the base pretty cleanly. It makes, uh, you really can work well with your materials. You'll save your materials and uh, it's just a great way to handle it. Again, we're going to peel this out of there. It's great dubbing. Now it's a little fan. I'm going to take that fan. I'm going to squeeze it. I'm going to take the stuff out of the tips, get rid of any, any real super long ones. And I'm going to take that. I'm going to slide it in my loop. Now, in hair hackling, we have the luxury of deciding right now how long my length is going to be. I can either pull it, the tips that way, or I can shorten it up. Um, and uh, I find that these flies are, are really, really tough, real hardy. I do this with uh, steelhead flies and um, with larger, larger hooks and, of course, many different colors. And it works out quite well. Now I'm going to stroke that, and I got that where I want it. Now, I like my vise because I can lay my hand in here. This is kind of a tricky point here. But we're going to take, take these fingers here, and I can roll that thread around. What I'm going to do is I'm going to roll it around until I get a comfortable place where I can come in and I can make one cut. By the way, I'm using a very long micro tip scissor. And the reason I like that long tip is I can come in and I can come here and I can make one cut and I'm done. If I had a short shank scissor right there, I'd be there a couple of cuts. Now you see I got the little butt ends. I'm going to push those closer to the thread loop. Now one of the tricks is this right here. Anytime you're making this W is to kick that bottom tip up just a little bit. I'm going to come off over here at an angle and I'm going to spin. I'm going to spin that up. Now, if at any point now the thread would break on me, I'm not in trouble. I just grab my hackle plier and grab the end of that thread and I would be in pretty good shape, okay? Because it will hold. Now, I'm going to run my finger down and basically I'm spinning it and tightening it up. And I tell you because I counted a couple of times that it only backs off about half of what it spins the other way. Like if I go like that, it spins so many, it only backs off about half. Now I'm going to dampen my fingers. I don't lick my materials, uh, especially uh, furs. I don't know what, what they cured it with, so I just don't do it. Um, I got sick one time, I'm just not going to do it again. So there. Now with a little bit of moisture, not much, and we're going to start wrapping that in. And we're going to stroke it back like we would a nice soft hackle. And it's a wrap in front of a wrap. We don't want to put a wrap on top. So it's a nice even wraps. Again, once you get so much in, you can say, okay, that's enough. I don't need any more in there. And you're there. It's amazing how much you can put in here. Now, if all of a sudden you get yourself way stacked up in the front there and you go, I have no room left to tie off, you can kind of grab things, take your fingernails, and just like you would if you were stacking deer hair, you can push that whole thing back just a little, just a smidgen. It doesn't take much, and you got it back. Now, we're going to take, and that's about all I'm going to put in there. So I'm going to come up. I'm going to pull back on my hook here a little bit and wrap that in there. Stroke it back. Try to keep as many fibers out of the head as we can, out of the eye as we can. Come in. Just not really just a V my scissors and push. I'm just V and I'm going to push my scissors. Now I'm going to spread this out a little bit. Now there is a version that looks like that without this thing. So then we're going to push it forward and we're going to stroke it back. I'm going to pull forward the mylar. And I'm going to take pinch and soft. One, two, and then I'm going to pull kind of hard and flatten that down and get it nice and tight. And I'm just going to pull up on this as hard as I can and cut it. And what it'll do is that'll snap back. It won't all go behind the, uh, behind the head there, but it's okay. This is, a, this is a fishing fly. This is not 
a super presentation fly, but it does, it does work. We're going to take and push back again, try to push off the hook eye as much as we can. Take my whip finisher. I'm going to take this, I'm going to rotate this back just a little bit. Sometimes that'll help if you're doing, working on a scud hook like this. This is just a scud hook, by the way. Um, it'll help uh, keep the thread from falling off the head, which is that's exactly what that one is going to do. Now again, That's kind of like what it looks like. It's a, you know, okay, without the shell back on there, it can be a little caddis pupa, if you will. Now we will take it again, because well, I, I like to show people it looks like wet. That's what we look like wet. I've got the nice little flash in it. And that's pretty buggy looking. Um, I use it as a searching nymph more than try to imitate any one imitation. I like it as, as a search with it. I'll put it on a two or three fly system and I'll use it as the middle fly on a dropper or something. And uh, it, it has worked well for me before. Okay, thank you.